Okay, welcome back. So we are just going to scan the back of my Nikon D780 here. It's uh, got a piece that's missing off the back. And I figured I would use it as an opportunity to showcase some of the workflow with mobile scanning uh, hooked up to my Creative Cars modular mount and how I can take that data and pull it into CAD and then create a replacement part for it. So everything in this video is sped up a little bit. Uh, just to make it a little bit shorter to watch, but you can see on the phone that I scanned it. Uh, most of the areas that I was interested in turned green. I clicked on the export or rather the share button and scanned the QR code on my computer. That way it would transfer from my phone over to the computer. Uh, that way I could work with it a little bit more efficiently. So just taking out the areas that I'm not interested in and then making sure that the resolution is set as fine as I can and the sensitivity as high as I can to try and get the most amount of information out of this. And then just doing a sanity check and making sure that it, it looks as I expect it to. Uh, so that now that the point cloud is optimized, now it is meshing. And I uh, realized that I had closure turned on, so now I'm remeshing. There we go, that looks a bit better. And going into the edit and simplification, I can bring the file down from something pretty large down to about 10 megabytes, export that, and now it's much more manageable inside of CAD to play with. Okay, so here we are in Fusion 360, bringing in the mesh. And then I will take that mesh, which is still a fairly large file, but it's much more manageable now that it's simplified. Uh, I turned it into a solid and I'm selecting three points uh, on the surface to create a plane for me to start working from. Now that I have that plane, since it's a pretty flat surface uh, where it mounts to, I'm taking a spline and just sporadically going along and making sure that I'm trying to capture the curvature and the rough size uh, of the, the whole of the piece that's missing. Uh, I'm sure it's not perfect, but going back over it, I can make sure that it's close enough. And then eventually with a test fit, if I need to make any other modifications, I will. So just looking, everything's on the surface. Nothing seems to be protruding further uh, than it needs to. So I'm just doing an extrude here to bring everything up to about the max height that I expect it will need to be. I'm putting a quick radius on all of the corners so it's not so sharp. Uh, and it will feel a little bit nicer to touch and use. Uh, copying it, moving it over, and, and again, another small radius on the bottom. And then I will export this, pull it into a slicer, and 3D print it, and give it a test fit. I usually like to check the, the slicer and make sure that it's producing as expected results. And there are a few settings here that you could change, but for these quick test fits, uh, leaving most of the stuff in their defaults is fine. So you can see on the bottom right, that's what the test piece, the first revision looks like. Uh, it's a little thick on the bottom side of it. So going into a side profile back into CAD, I can start to clean that up and make the side profile of it match a little bit better to reality as well. So extruding here from that face to try and capture the, the side profile of it accurately. And you can see it's taking the computer a little bit of time to, to think through, but it does get there. And you can see right there on the, the bottom side is where it's taking a, a big chunk of the material out. So even though the, the t first test fit went really well, uh, I wanted to have the contours line up a little bit better. Uh, and I, I didn't expect the first revision, especially such a rough revision, to be perfect either. So now I've got that first major contour corrected, a small radius back on things again so that it's smooth. Uh, since it's becoming more of a complex shape, sometimes it gets a little bit tricky on where and how much of a radius you can put in different areas. So sometimes that takes a, a little bit of playing around. But just looking around and it seems like this seems pretty reasonable. So again, we'll move it over with a copy and then we will export it, bring it into the slicer, do a, 
a quick look and comparison between the two. And then give this one a, a print and see how it fits and how it feels, if it's any better. Uh, since we're starting to get some layer lines now, I decided to use the uh, adaptive layer height just to smooth things out a little bit. And it helps somewhat, but there's a, a few other settings I could change if I really wanted to make this as good as I can. So again, on the bottom right, you can see the print of the second revision. And it came out much better. Again, it, it fits in really well. Uh, the contour on the bottom side that I was trying to correct is now corrected. Uh, but now the, the top of it, I want to focus on and try and improve that profile. So making another plane uh, from kind of the top of the camera to the bottom of the camera. And then from that plane, I'm just going to make uh, a rectangle and then extrude that upwards. That way I have a face that's normal, that's perpendicular to the surface for me to sketch from. And so now from this face, I can make a, a sketch using splines again and try and capture that profile correctly. And again, I'm just kind of sporadically and roughly putting the points into place, trying to rough it in. Uh, it's not perfect, but honestly, it, it works out pretty well. So again, we'll just do an extrusion now that we have that sketch. Um, I realized that I had it set to cut through both pieces, the uh, scanned file uh, and the, the actual component that I'm working on. So I went back and changed the settings so that it's just cutting through uh, the piece that I'm trying to print out. Okay, so that took a little bit of time and there we go. You can see now the cut is just on the part that I'm working on and not on the mesh anymore. Okay, so with doing that, sometimes there are some artifacts that need a little bit of cleaning up and it can be tedious at times, but my method is just going through and selecting the faces and seeing what will delete and then what won't delete. And sometimes you have to move around and check all of the faces. Uh, then I'll try to extrude the components and get rid of as much as I can. And, and usually it works. It just takes a little bit of time and a little bit of effort to get it cleaned up. Sometimes I even have luck using the, the push and pull feature and making things really, really small if I can't get rid of it. And then once I bring it into the slicer, it'll usually get a little bit better and take care of itself. But now you can see I've got the profile in the top to bottom direction now cut into it so that it matches all of the contours a little bit better. And I moved it over, did a copy, radius the corners as usual. Now bring it into the slicer and I will put all three revisions uh, right next to each other. So you can see the first one is fairly basic. The second one adds another level of complexity and the third one adds another level on top of that, uh, all getting a little bit closer to matching the actual profile of what I'm going after. So again, I'll change the layer height to be adaptive and we'll print this out at just one gram uh, in a little over 10 minutes. Uh, it doesn't take too long to wait and find out if it works or not. And here's a test fit uh, of the component. So we got it printed out and with one hand, we'll pop it into place and it fits snugly. That is, it literally kind of clicks into place. Uh, I don't even need to add any additional adhesive or anything to it. And uh, overall, I'm actually really happy with it. It's not perfect. I'll probably bring it into a mesh mixer or a blender and do a little sculpting. Uh, the top right edge uh, I could bring up a little bit and the bottom I could push down a little bit, but it, it feels good. It works good. And it was a fun activity overall that took about an hour's worth of time as a whole. Um, and it was just kind of fun to play around with and give an opportunity to take another video. But Thanks for watching, and if you have any more questions or comments, feel free to leave them below.